Uh, let's just start with, uh, I know it might be a difficult question, but without rattling off a, a laundry list of, of every player, if you had to pick one guy that you saw the most growth from this season, who would it be? It's a tough one. Uh, I think everybody would like the, like the answer to be maybe one of the marquee names. Um, you know, Byfield's quick turnaround uh, right about game 10 was something special. Um, maybe somebody who surprised the most was, was maybe Jacob Mavari though. Mm -hmm. In what sense? Just, you, you weren't sure how, uh, you know, a first year North American, uh, pro would, would fare coming in then a little, then a little bit of an injury, uh, to start off a season. So then you really don't know what you have. Um, and then he, you, you're sort of, you're sort of underwhelmed initially because of he's uh, he's not the most fluid skater, but then all of a sudden you notice he doesn't get beat and then he's facilitating all kinds of offense and making, making head such heady plays with the puck uh, that on, on a consistent basis. So I think maybe he, he might be the one that kind of surprised uh, me the most out of everybody. Throughout the season, we asked you, of course, a lot about those marquee names that you mentioned there, Byfield, Caliup, et cetera. Akil Thomas, though, he seemed to be somebody that sort of flew under the radar a little bit in the sense that he didn't get as much pub, but he may have been the most important player to you on a nightly basis uh, in the lineup. Just wanted to get your thoughts on him. Yeah, it's, uh, he, he's an interesting one because um, he, he's sort of, sort of like an avalanche. He just, he just kind of keeps rolling along, um, doesn't, doesn't ever make any mistakes, never, never gets stopped, but, uh, and then and then he makes four, four like elite plays a game, um, you know, that, that sometimes go slightly unnoticed because it's a, it, it's a deaf play with a, with a flip pass or uh, just a bump play on the power play, something, something just extremely unique and heady. Um, and then, and then there's also the nights where he, you know, he racks up the hat trick or the, or the three assists and it's the game, the game changer uh, in addition to playing his overall solid game. So, uh, very, very, uh, you know, impressed by his rookie year and, um, you know, with a couple more steps, uh, you know, a couple, couple steps quicker, a little more power to his stride. He, he could uh, someday push for a spot with the Kings. One more quick one before we pass the mic. You've had a week now to sort of decompress. When you think back to the season, if you had one regret, one thing that maybe you would have done differently or would have changed, what would it be? Oof, uh, there's, there's a lot of them. Uh, certain, Probably, probably more behind closed doors than than anything that we did uh, macro wise, like um, you know handling handling of a player individually or something along along those lines. But um, I, I, I won't divulge that. But probably be more more individual basis. I'm still still learning uh, quite a bit about uh, about this this type of pro. Uh, this you know I haven't been in pro hockey for six years before this one, and so kind of uh, getting getting back into the flow of that. And um, you know, but there was. There's a lot of positives in that realm too, but I think that would probably be it. It would be something behind closed doors. Appreciate it. Thank you. Next up is Lisa Doman. Hi, I know you've answered lots of uh, big picture questions about Quentin Byfield's development, but could you point, point to some specific areas of improvement that, that he made from when you first dealt with him to the end of the season? Sure, Lisa. Yeah, he was... Uh, I think I think the biggest difference between his game at the beginning and, and what you ended up seeing at the Kings level uh, was when he when we first got him he would fly by almost every one of his battles and so he, and when he would when he would engage it was almost always with one hand trying to poke and poke and go with his stick on the way through and uh, you know credit credit to QB and um, and Craig Johnson uh, to to work together on on Quinton's routes and to get him more. Uh, more affluent with his timing and in the in the, uh, in the defensive zone and the importance of being around the puck and then trusting his acceleration and so that's kind of what you ended up seeing towards the end is when he would carry that puck and transport at the 180 feet is is that confidence level that he could be around the puck support it properly and then still have the gear to take off so a lot of um, not only not only detail work but also uh, instilling of the confidence and, and the belief uh, inner belief the earned confidence that he that he achieved by, by following direction, uh, giving it a try, you know, it's not always going to work that way with players. You know, they have to, they have to play the game. They, they take advice from the coaches and then, and then put it, put it to use, but ultimately they have to make the decision on how they're going to play, uh, instinctually, instinctually. And, uh, QB, I thought, 
really had a, had a tremendous blend of being able to take the coaching, uh, but then also rely on his instincts on the way out. Uh, and secondly, from a housekeeping uh, point of view, um, could you talk about the injuries and if anybody's going to like require surgery for various things that you can kind of talk about now that the season's over? Yeah, I, I won't. I won't be able to go uh, into into detail on that, unfortunately, Lisa. Okay, no problem. Thank you very much. Next up is Jesse Cohen. Hey, John. Hi, Jesse. Uh, we talked a little bit about it in the middle of the season. Obviously, the turnaround at about the one third mark of the season was huge. The team sort of looked more like what uh, I think you hoped they would. Um, but I'm curious, not only your first season, Craig Johnson's first season, the coaching staff as a whole together's first season, um, did you guys improve and develop at, at the same rate that the team did off the ice? That's a, that's a great question. I think, uh, you know, that we were, we were never, uh, out of inspiration for a message, uh, something to, something to work on, something to make better, something to, uh, something to that drastically needed improvement. There was, the, the team and, and individuals uh, provided that that inspiration on a daily basis. So I think that as the year went on, we got better at addressing uh, single values and, and, and trying to just fix one thing at a time. And I, that was always the, the, the mindset, but you know, when your record starts going down to one, one, 10 and two, you, then you really are, are looking for answers and it's not just one simple thing, but uh, ultimately we had the confidence as a group to stick to that mantra. And I think that, that COVID actually played into this, uh, into our hand um, when on this topic and that we couldn't, we couldn't have long meetings. You know, you're, I don't know if you guys are privy to our, our setup in the video, but we were out on the pond ice here and the, the players are roughly 75 to 100 feet away from each other. Uh, the one player at the front of the room towards the guy at the back of the room in the other corner. So, um, it became apparent quite quickly, and this was a lot of help uh, from from our video coach Brad Schuler, is to to try to limit the the amount of time and also try to try to just hone in on one one or maybe two items per video session, and that's always the goal. But I think it, I think we got even better at that at that mantra, at that idea of getting the players in and out of the video session five minutes uh, at, at max get the message through that we want and then going out and working on that one thing that day and you know i, I the feedback that we got uh from the players um lined up that way is that they they felt like we got more predictable as a team through that avenue and it didn't happen overnight like just said that, that one third mark it's not like the light the light switch turned on right like we still we still dipped after that and then we came we came back at the end but that's how your season's going to work. Uh, but th th that was that was one theme that I took away, and it was something I always aimed for. But uh, I think now it's it's uh, it's part of my, my rebranding as a coach is to is to keep things a lot simpler um, and concise in the in the in the meetings. I know you guys won't use it as an excuse, but I'm going to do it for you. Um, <laughs> weird year uh, with the goaltending, the defense. You guys were skating five defensemen at times. Um, Zach Dooley had the stat. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I think Sean Dursey's the only guy who played um, at least 80% of the season for you on the blue line. So heading into next season with a quote unquote normal off season and now hopefully a, a fuller complement of players on the blue line and in net, how much does that help? Uh, your confidence and help bolster your credibility with the rest of the of the team going into a, a new season next year. Yeah, I, I think anytime anytime you can have a full lineup is uh, you get you can have a better chance of playing an aggressive in your face style. You know, I think that it, it, it is interesting to to consider how much how off how much that can seep into a say it's a defenseman's uh, head about needing conserve energy and uh, is he more is he less apt to pinch when he knows he's supposed to but wants to save that energy for that that big penalty kill or who knows if we're going on the power play or just all, all in all I could be rolling over the boards uh, 40 seconds from now after a 20 second break you know that type of thing so um, how, how, how deep does that uh, does that seep in I'm not sure into into a player's DNA but uh, from a from a coaching staff having having more weapons at your at, at your fingertips and uh, more versatility whether it's say it's a guy like Mark Holt that is uh, a standout on the uh, on the penalty kill and can 
you know, take care of, uh, take care of a lot of your problems in his own, in our own end, or if it's a guy like Cam Gons who's facilitating offense, whether just using those guys as veteran examples, but uh, having, having that extra, that extra, uh, you know, piece to your equation is, is really important, I think. And, um, you know, we can, you're always at the liberty of injuries at, uh, at our level and the, and the, and the Kings level and things like waivers and trades happen. So I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on any of that too much. What I would say is that I'd love, I'd love the idea of having, having a loaded up blue line with all kinds of uh, versatility back there. But at the same time, we're, we're aware that, uh, that a wish list is, is, is just that it's a wish list and we're, we're, uh, we're ready to work with whatever comes at us. All right. Thanks, John. Next up is Zach Dooley. Hey, Robo. Um, Looking at the group that, that you might have back next year, it's reasonable ex to expect you might see a chunk of these guys return. And from your experience in pro hockey, how big of a jump can guys make from their first pro year to their second pro year? It, some of them can be massive. And I, I don't know if we're, you know, I'm hopeful that we're going to see that, uh, whether it's uh, just a little bit more confidence or uh, through, through these two months of training. And I hope, I hope that our off season is, is long enough for those guys to make some of those gains and that they, they leave here. Uh, you know, and the message was crystal clear, uh, particularly with, with some of our younger guys that this has to be a business summer and it can't be, uh, all right, COVID's over and we're, we're going home to vacation and going home to the lakes and, and, uh, and things like that. We gotta, we gotta hunker in and, and, and round out our athleticism, attack the summer. Um, and, and at that point, then, then we can see huge jumps, you know, with our, with our young core, you can, uh, these guys are still at an age where they can, they can make massive leaps in their athleticism. And, um, you know, that's, that's if they didn't leave here a little, little banged up, but guys that are guys that are relatively fresh going into this off season need to need to grab it. They need to attack it and they need to, they need to come back with, uh, as much better athletes and, and ready to take on, uh, next year. And so I think a big, big thing that, you know, we kind of tried to, tried to sift through with, with this group is that you either, you either had to leave here with, with confidence that you can, you can come, you can come in next year and, and, and jump in and be a, uh, be a consistent player with whatever it was that you were doing well at the end of the year. Uh, or, or you left here with, a, with a little bit of hunger. Um, say it's a guy like, like Madden who got, who got his feet wet, but he didn't get to realize a full season. Um, even in the shortened, the shortened realm of it, he didn't get to uh, get to experience that and so he's he's leaving here hungry to to have a summer and to and to make sure that he's he's up to train up to up to snuff a training camp and ready to ready to impact that so it, there's I don't think we have anybody that left here complacent uh, I feel like we left guys here uh, guys left with with a degree of confidence um, and ready ready to to take another step at the American League level or we had guys who left here hungry to to prove themselves at this level